Well, thanks very much, everyone, and uh, thank you for the welcome and those kind uh, words. Of, of, it's great to be here in Hawthorne in the electorate of uh, Petro Giorgio, my good friend up the back, and to all my parliamentary colleagues, it's good to be with you here today. Uh, I'm not here to, to sort of start talking about who's to blame for what, but to try and put to you what our task will be if the coalition is re-elected in trying to deal with such a fundamental injustice which is the way in which disabilities has been handled for very many years across this country by governments of all persuasions and at all levels. I think that the first thing is um, to understand why we haven't yet signed a CSTDA. And if you don't understand that, then you don't understand what the thinking is behind where we're at. See, I'm responsible for childcare, and I've had a lot to do with aged care. And in those two areas, the Australian public would demand that we have external validation of those services to protect the elderly and to protect the children. That is just a given. And any government that said we are going to take away external validation of those services would be drummed out of town, as they should be. But the reality is that today, right now, today in this country, there is no uniform external validation of supported accommodation and respite services around this country. That is a blight on our, us as a society. It means that we have not valued those people with a disability and intellectual incapacity as much as we do aged and child childcare. What I have said to the states is this, that we will not have another CSTDA which aspires to having transparency, that aspires to having accountability, that aspires to having external validation and that aspires to help people from Indigenous background. They have to be actually committed to. Now, when we first commenced the negotiations for the CSTDA, the states, because of the New South Wales state election, asked us to put them back. Not the Commonwealth, the states did. When I went to the meeting on the 3rd of April in Brisbane and I put on the table a 50-50 offer to fund not the 2080 as it currently is, as Annette pointed out at the moment, and has been historically since 1992, I think it was, since that time, the states have been responsible for 80 per cent of a CSTDA in round figures and the Commonwealth 20 per cent. The Commonwealth obviously, as you all know, pick up the carers' payment, the disability support pension, as well as is fully responsible for employment services. We said, put that aside, you come up with a plan, each state, which meets the unmet need and the Commonwealth will match it dollar for dollar, 50-50. You all know that they walked out of that meeting and rejected it. Subsequently, Western Australia came back, as did the ACT, as did the Northern Territory, and we now have agreements with all three. What we could have done from the Commonwealth's perspective at that point is to keep blaming each other. We decided that it was time that we took a stand and that we did something. One of the criticisms that's been levelled at us by many people is, why would you start a second system? We don't want to start a second system. This is not somewhere that I particularly wanted to go, but I wasn't going to continue to let people sit out there months now, five months after the last agreement was due to, to be renewed, because it was the 30th of June of this year that it was supposed to be in place, and have you wondering what's going to happen. So whether it's respite services, whether it's services into their own home, whether it's new bricks and mortar is what we are committed to providing and respite for people aged over 60 who have also been caring long term. Annette mentioned that today um, the Shadow Minister Jan McLucas has said that she would in fact put that $900 million into the CSTDA. It's a $1.8 billion package, not a $900 million package. And the $1.8 billion means that we can provide direct assistance to every parent of a child with a disability as well. And only a couple of weeks ago, we gave out to all the non-government organisations around the country roughly half a million dollars each to go and build additional respite services. What we have said to the states, and just so that you know exactly where we are at with the CSTDA, is at the last meeting of the ministers, they came and they actually committed that by the 30th of November, they would give us implementation dates, implementation dates for the four things that I mentioned. Initially, they said, let's do it within five years. Well, the next agreement goes for five years, and I have no faith that that will be done. Five years ago, we all aspired to have external validation. The federal government has provided external validation for its employment services. Some states have done, gone some way. No state has gone sufficiently far enough. We're not asking for everyone to have the same system, but we're saying that these people, these families, deserve that support. 
Of course, only last week the Prime Minister and I announced that carers would also be beneficiaries of the twice yearly payment, as would people with disabilities to directly support them. Not one off, but ongoing. There needs to be more money into the disability sector. But more money on its own is not the answer. I would not support providing money directly to more bureaucrats at any level. I want to actually see outcomes that are delivered. How many additional people in young people in nursing homes are we going to have out? How many more additional respite places for older people are we going to have? How many additional supported accommodation places are we going to have? And are they all going to have validation, which means that we can have certainty that they are going to provide a quality of care with a person that is qualified to do it? For some of you, you will know that unfortunately I have had the worst of circumstances in my own electorate with people of supported, in a supported accommodation that the whole community backed. Because there wasn't that external validation, today there are people facing charges of torture, deprivation of liberty and of abuse before the courts in Queensland as a result of not having those things in place. I would rather the Commonwealth take up the cudgels and do it ourselves than again leave it to chance that this thing isn't put in place. This is 2007, not 1807. We should be making that an absolute necessity upon any agreement that we go forward with. I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. I'm sure I've eaten up my time. But thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for continuing to advocate upon those people and on behalf of those people who still don't have a voice at an electoral ballot that they richly deserve.